Hey, everybody, this is Jeff Duden, and we are on the home front with Brian Littlefield. Uh, he is the co-founder of Jocko Fuel with Jocko Wilnick Energy Drinks Plus other products coming out with clean and natural ingredients and also origin an American made clothing manufacturer nestled in the woods, deep in the woods of Maine. Uh, that's where they come from. And uh, we, we have a lot to talk about today. Brian, welcome to the home front. Thanks for having me on Jeff. Looking forward to it. Yeah, a hundred percent. Hey, would you mind sharing a little bit about uh, how you grew up uh, just real quick, uh, because you have a very interesting story, how you got to martial arts and eventually how you got into business. Just real quick. Yeah, well, um, I'll, I'll try and I'll try and do it quickly. But yeah, I grew up in Maine, um, part of a pretty big family split between uh, two different sides. I was the only one actually between my parents, uh, the only the only child. Um, my my parents were both married once prior and both had big families. So five half brothers, two half sisters, really, I was really close to, um, uh, three brothers on, on my mother's side, mm. uh, because they were, when I was younger, they were older than me, but when I was younger, they were still in the house. Right. So, um, you know, growing up, you know, they were 10, I think 10, 12 and 14 years older than me. So, uh, all boys. So I went through it and, um, it was fun. That's was why good. you got into jujitsu. Yeah, right. Exactly. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I had a very close first cousin who um, was a competitive athlete as well, professional in multiple sports and also was a uh, professional fighter. So um, he had a lot of influence on me as well. So I played like regular athletics, I would say up until my freshman year. Then I kind of fell off, went away from it, went to college. Um, I started becoming pretty out of shape in my probably junior senior year of high school. Um, it, it, you know, it was exacerbated the first year I went to, to college freshman year eating, you know, dollar menu back then. And, you know, just really blew up and just kind of had an epiphany, um, went on my own personal, personal, uh, health and wellness journey really fell in love with, um, the nutraceutical side of things. Like, uh, I've always, I've always had a knack for, um, the sciences and also really a, a big appreciation for leverage, all forms of different types of leverage. And I loved the idea of applying these things, um, to what you're doing. They're not a replacement, but I loved being able to apply them to what I was doing. So, which is also how I fell in love with jujitsu because it's all about leverage and tactics. So, and not, uh, not as much strength and speed. So I, uh, started training jujitsu in, in college as part of that health and wellness journey. Uh, it led me to, I was running a school. I was running a, I, I went back to school for business and, um, you know, I, I read out of college. I started a small brick and mortar supplement store. So I was running this supplement store. I was running at a jujitsu Academy and, you know, and, uh, that's, that's how I got my start in business. Awesome. And you're, you evolved into a manufacturer. And I think I heard you say one point that you recognize that in great product placement, by the way, in, um, <laughs> in, uh, in Maine, as it, where you grew up in Maine, and there was all this manufacturing that was going on up there. And uh, so you decided uh, to make geese uh, originally with a company called Origin. How did you start that business? So I joined Origin. Actually, okay. I, I didn't, I didn't create, yeah, I, I didn't create origin origin Got was founded it. by Pete Roberts. Um, Pete is my business partner and a few different businesses. Um, one of my best friends and he, um, he founded origin in 2011. He decided to start manufacturing around 2012, okay. really kind of manufacturing kicked off in 2013. And so, and when I say kicked off, I mean, it was literally cutting down forest and sawing out, you know, timbers and, and standing up a building and, uh, in, in the woods of Maine and a little town, oddly enough, called industry. And so in this little town of industry, Maine, we, um, you know, uh, that's where, that's where origin got its start. And I joined, I first, it was in 2013 when, when Pete and I linked up, but it was in 2014 when I really 
jumped on board and, you know, it was a total of five or six employees at the time. And, uh, we quickly, when I jumped on board with origin, closed down my business, it was actually in Ohio, uh, the, the supplement store and the Academy that I was running when that shut down and I moved back to Maine, um, I had been helping Pete with origin from a distance for about two years. So it was 2016 when I moved back to Maine where I grew up and that's when things got, got pretty serious. You know, we decided to, we did a couple of things, scaled quickly, went from seven employees to 35 employees and, you know, in 12 months and, and really went all in on, on the business relocated from the little facility that we were in in industry to downtown Farmington. Uh, Maine to a much larger facility at that time. And, uh, and it's just quickly grown from, from there. When the companies got really big origin and Jocko fuel, which Jocko fuel also started, um, around the same time that I moved back to Maine, uh, being that that was my background, we kind of got into that space at the same time. Originally it was an origin division. And ultimately in 2017, when Jocko came on, it became Jocko Fuel. We really rebranded it and really leaned into um, him and the vision he had for what he wanted to do with products. And, you know, Origin was on a rocket ship and Jocko Fuel was on a rocket ship. And uh, in 2018, I transitioned uh, transitions exclusively over to Jocko Fuel. And so I've been um, helping just grow that thing as much as possible and having a really good time doing it. Origin has a broad product line, uh, tops, bottoms, jeans, boots, uh, are all the products sourced and, and made in America or as the supply chain, uh, become more diverse? Yeah. We like to say everything is, um, everything is made in America, uh, and sourced in America. Now there's a few exceptions. Uh, it's, there's a term called berry. Uh, which is my understanding and it's and and we like to say i think it's better than berry and so on the origin side of things there's like i think it's less i think it's less than one percent of raw materials that come out from outside from the from outside the us yeah like it is truly like you can follow the cotton farmer all the way to the factory uh in maine or now north carolina so the company really expanded it ended up having uh, three facilities in Maine, then it ended up going to North Carolina and, uh, we, we, we grew there. Yeah. Yeah. You got a hunting line coming out now. It looks like, so, uh, definitely a very, uh, uh, kind of a man's brand wilderness type feel to it. Look and feel. Yeah. It's, uh, it's definitely male centric for sure. Uh, it's a, yeah. it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, uh, you know, male dominated brand. That's for sure. It started roots in jujitsu. It'll always have roots in jujitsu, but you know, it got into from, from there, it got into lifestyle and workwear, denim, you know, blue jeans, um, you know, core and, and, and heart, uh, of America, you know, and, and from there went into a number of other things, but yes, now into, uh, hunting and active wear, like workout, type, you know, gear, it's, it's do origin is doing a lot. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, I searched the website, couldn't find the skinny jeans, didn't pop up. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, <laughs> you'll find some, I think they're, I think they're called fighter fit. Um, okay. All right. Well, so they, they, they're not skinny. I wouldn't say they're skinny. I'd say they're slim. I'd okay. say they're slim. there's, there's definitely no skinny, uh, skinny jeans. No, you're, uh, I'm not going to look European, uh, yeah. Jumping on the site there. Yeah. All right. Well, That's cool. Sure. Um, well, look, so, um, so you got this great business going, w uh, with your partner and then how did it come to pass that you got connected to Jocko? Yeah. Like I said, in 2000, late 2016, there was a woman by the name of Sarah Armstrong, who is, uh, you know, an amazing woman, a friend of ours now. And she was actually a listener and a friend of Jocko, but a listener of the podcast. And she got tired of hearing Jocko talk about this little gee company up in Maine when people would ask him, he convinced a lot of people, you know, to start jujitsu through spreading like what it was all about. 
And so they would always ask, what kind of gi should I get? What kind of uniform should I get? And he would always say that, hey, there's this little company up in Maine. If anybody ever talks to the guy, let him know. I'm trying to get a hold of him. I want to, I would like to partner with those guys. And so finally he ended up getting on the phone. Uh, he ended up getting on a long zoom call with Pete. And, uh, I remember the phone call listening to them talk to each other. It was like that. It was like talking in a mirror, you know, it was, it was, it was pretty funny. There was a lot of alignment, ton of synergy. And it was just, a. it was like a perfect match right out of the gate. Yeah. So, um, so he had a product or a product concept. He was already in market. You guys had marketing chops. He had a growing business. It made sense uh, to put the two together, I guess, or to partner and maybe some new ventures together. Uh, and and uh, there's a lot of interplay between the brands, especially if you go to both of the websites uh, and stuff like that. So what was the concept for Jocko Fuel? Uh, clean, uh, healthy ingredients, uh, but originally the taste, you, 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 you didn't get the taste right out of the gate. Yeah. I mean, so what happened was, you know, Jocko had come on the origin side of things and he was super stoked to be part of this American manufacturing, but he also, you know, we, we, we talked and cause when, when he realized we had a small nutrition thing going on, obviously it, came up in conversation. He and I started to talk and he's a, as you can imagine, like he's just a, the ultimate high performer. So of course, someone like himself. And as you listen to him talk about his past, like he's, he's had good and bad experiences with, with supplements, you know, as a former seal, like they would, of course they would use, you know, supplements and energy drinks or whatever they needed to, to perform. And so he had the ability to try all kinds of different ones, see what he liked and, you know, and see the ones he didn't like. And he had an idea of what he would do if he was to do his own. And so when we started talking, we had the same thoughts. Like we were very much aligned. It was like, let's keep it as natural as possible. Let's make it, you know, with, you know, no snake oil, just use, um, tried and true ingredients that have great clinical literature that show efficacy and nothing, nothing in gray area, stick to natural flavors and sweeteners. And at the time it was sweetener. We, you know, back in 2017, you really, if you were naturally sweetened, you had monk fruit and you had, you know, stevia. And so right. you'd pick one and, you know, neither of us really cared for stevia that much. So we went with monk fruit and monk fruit's an amazing sweetener. It's great. has a ton of health benefits as well, which is very rare for a sweetener. And, uh, but, as a sweetener, it actually has a ton of limitations. You know, it, it's, it, it's like 400 times sweeter than sugar, uh, by weight, but it also just has a, has a threshold. And when you get past that threshold, it doesn't, it doesn't taste very good. So, you know, to match the sweetness of the general consumer, you know, often what we found was we were having to push it above that limit. And so for the first few years, we were really just kind of capped on, how sweet we could make the product versus what people needed. And so we were teetering on like using too much and getting, you know, a weird taste or using too little and not being appealing enough to the masses. And so until other sweetener and flavor technology came out that allowed us to do it better naturally, we were, we were kind of shackled to those limitations. And so we just, we ran with it and we made changes as we could. And we've made many changes along the way. You're continuing to roll out new products. I think Mulk is a product that I've heard about uh, coming out proteins and, and things like that. Can you talk a little bit about your product development process and maybe when you come to a go or a no-go decision on a product? Yeah, that's a good question. So in the early days, it was almost exclusively like Jocko wanted to make what he wanted to take. So he would say, hey, I like... I really need a joint product. Like, you know, I've put my body through, you know, everything and I, you know, feel the wear and tear, like let's build a joint support product. Okay. Done. Check. And then we would, you know, feed the needs of really in the design and, and, and what he wanted and then take it to the, take it to the people. You know, he had, he obviously had this massive audience, um, you know, through the podcast and he, 
you know, of course he said, uh, well, we'll just make what I want to take. And if people want to buy it, that's great. You know, obviously we quickly learned people would want to buy it, but we truly made what he wanted. And so eventually that transitioned to, Hey, what would, what would make sense for the brand? Cause we've never been all about just jumping into categories that are just hot. Like we don't just, Oh, Hey, there's a new, you know, um, you know, when, when, for instance, when BCAAs, you know, branch chain amino acids came back in a big way, we didn't jump on that train. We didn't jump on the collagen train. We didn't jump on a number of things just because they were hot. We, we, we did what we wanted to do when we wanted to do it. And that's been really nice. And so part of the evolution was me bringing to him the idea of, Hey, what do you think about doing this and doing it our way and putting a different spin on it? And for me, the product development cycle sort of like, I would really say the mindset is a lot of companies, what they'll do is they'll, they'll go into, if they're even going to try and innovate, right? There's a lot of companies that will just launch a product. That's just like copycat or a me too, but let's say they're going to innovate. There's usually two sides to, to change. I guess that's the best way to, for me to explain it. And so there's the side of like, Hey, we're going to give people more of what they want or, Hey, we're going to take out things that people don't want, but they almost companies almost never check both boxes. They almost never say, Hey, we're going to give them what they want and take out the things they don't. And so anytime we go into a product, what we try to do is we try to do both of those. So with an energy drink, it's like, okay, we didn't just say, Hey, we're going to give them caffeine, but we're going to take out, you know, the, the, the chemical preservatives of, sodium benzoate and potassium sorbate that people try and avoid nowadays. Um, we're not just going to take out the, the artificial sweeteners like sucralose, aspartame, ASK and, and whatnot, and then put in a natural sweetener. So we didn't say, Hey, we're just going to exclude the things that they don't, which by the way, we could have done and, and been perfectly uh, successful because people would have bought it just because they're like, Oh, I got an energy drink and I don't have to sacrifice my, my health. Right. But, you know, what we said was, hey, we're going to also say, hey, we want to replace excessive caffeine with adding other nootropic ingredients. What we're going to do is we're going to add other compounds that can help caffeine um, actually work better. And so we're looking at both sides of it. We're not just looking at it very linearly. And so that's a that's a really defining factor for us when we're looking at bringing a new product to market. And it's, again, you know, done very well for us. What is a nutraceutical? Yeah, for me, I like to use the term nutraceutical because uh, supplement has such a negative connotation to so many people. Right. Um, it's, it's really what it is. And, and to me, there's a difference between there's there's a to me, nutraceutical is a step further. So a supplement is like, hey, I'm going to supplement like let's say you have vitamin D deficiency. You're going to supplement with vitamin D so you can replace that deficiency. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. With the nutraceutical, I look at it like, okay, there's other things. There's, there's, um, compounds, there's botanicals, there's things in nature that we can use as medicine. So if you're dealing with some sort of underlying issue, whether that be joint pain, whether that be memory loss, whether that be, um, low testosterone, you know, a number of these things that you might encounter in, in living. Cause right. You know, every, you're basically getting attacked on all fronts all the time. Right. And so there's these nutraceuticals, much like there are pharmaceuticals and these natural things in nature that we, we can take and we can extract and we can use to oftentimes turn on the body's natural biological mechanisms to improve that portion of their health. And mm -hmm. so that to me is where the difference between just saying, Hey, I'm going to supplement with something and Hey, I'm going to use, um, nature to heal. These products generally would be focused on recovery, restoration. What about anti-aging? Yeah. Um, that was, or is that more peptides and things like that? Well, we do have an anti-aging product. Um, okay. actually, so yeah, uh, so there's How does that work. Yeah. I'll, uh, it, it's, so there's a number of ways to, to target aging. Right. And so a lot of people don't know this, but, 
um, you know, not to, to shoot ourselves in the foot, but the, the one thing that people can do that's been clinically tested that has had a more profound effect on biological aging markers. The Dunedin pace is really probably the gold standard of clocks they use to measure your biological age. There's a number that they've used over time. And this Dunedin pace is probably the, the best. And so what they found is there's a number of nutraceuticals, pharmaceuticals, and therapies that people have done, like, um, like oxygen therapies, the, you know, cold shock, heat shock, those types of things. They've all, a lot of them have had great effects. There's actually nothing that has had as profound as of an effect as a reduction of caloric intake over time. Hmm. So what we know is the thing that's actually going to help increase lifespan is eating less calories over time. That's the thing that's going to help the most. Now, to take it a step further, of course, you know, you have things like peptides, you have uh, other pharmaceutical drugs that are that are used to target different um, genetic actions. But the one thing that we found that we really leaned into was um, was the NAD side of things. So obviously we have NAD3. So which NAD3 is actually a little bit different. So NAD itself uh, isn't ultra bioavailable when you just consume it. So people right. take these precursors like NMN and NR, which which both work. Um, literature seems to be more recently supporting the the NR side of things, but we took a different approach. Uh, although I'm I'm a big proponent of NR, we took a different approach and we ended up using a trademark, very expensive trademarked ingredient. It's actually a compound of three ingredients. And what they found was like in this combination, in this ratio, it actually made your body create more NAD and you didn't have to use the precursor. And so the, the anti-aging compound, the, the actual, there's a multiple capsules in this packet that we have, it's called Time War. And so the anti-aging blend in there is, is NAD3. And um, it's, a, it's got two other ingredients. One is called PQQ. And the other one is called spermidine and the trademark version is youth. And that one's really interesting because spermidine is, um, it got its, you know, it's got its name because I believe the compound was originally found in sperm. And so of course, scientists said spermidine. And so yeah. uh, I believe the, it's predominantly extracted through wheat germ now. And this spermidine, it doesn't take much. There's actually only three milligrams, which is considered a high dose. And so the spermidine, what it does is it, what would normally take, you know, exercising or fasting to trigger um, autophagy process in the body to rid the, the thing about it is like kind of ridding the body of dead or damaged cells. The spermidine will do it by just ingesting it. So it'll actually turn on that body's mechanism. And so this, um, anti-aging blend, it's pretty powerful. And so that's one of the ways that we're targeting aging aside from best thing to target aging is exercise. So what right. do we do? Support exercise. Well, and you said caloric intake. So you look at, yeah. I, I, I was listening to, I, I don't know if, who it was, maybe Jordan Peterson was talking about the reduction uh, over time in grip strength in males uh, mm -hmm. due to our diets, increased processed foods and things like that. And our grip strength is decreasing as our testosterone uh, is decreasing and uh, much at a much faster rate than women's grip strength is decreasing. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, I so look, don't take that as a fact because I heard that on the internet. So, yeah, but, but <laughs> I can tell I you, mean, I agree. I, I understand the grip strength thing is hundred percent. hundred percent. I didn't know the statistic around the men versus women, but it's probably correct. Um, you know, we're surrounded by the, really what it is, is it's a, um, sedentary lifestyle. It's right. ultra processed foods. I don't like saying processed foods because everything's processed, right? I mean, just like grinding, like I had, I had, um, you know, I'm a partner in a, a, a direct to consumer ranch to table beef company. And, you know, I had some of their burger for, for lunch. Technically it's processed. It's run through sure. a grinder. So, but when you're talking about ultra processed foods. Yeah. Like um, there's no food actually in it. 
Yeah, there's, yeah. I mean, it's, you know, what it is, is it's, it either has a ton of preservatives, it has a ton of food additives, or it doesn't have a ton of nutritional value, right. or it's, it's just so far from its origin source. Um, you know, this, there's a big, you know, there's a lot of uh, disagreement on this subject, you know, people will say food is food, and I won't get into all that. But in my opinion, sedentary lifestyle, the ultra processed foods, along with the endocrine disruptors that we have in our lifestyle, the, the, the phthalates, you know, being constantly, I mean, surrounded and wrapped in, which it's, it's hard to get away from, you know, I'm drinking out of a plastic bottle. Right. Um, you know, so what I say is you just try and minimize that stuff. Like you're not going to get away from it in, in sure. our, in our current society. Like we're not going to go back to drinking out of glass only. Um, you know, I know some guys that sleep in only cotton boxers and cotton sheets and they won't sleep in polyester and I get it. Uh, what I would say is limit, limit it as much as you can, but you're not going to be able to get away from, from all of it. Yeah. And the product that you were talking about is called time warp. Time war. Time war. Like war on time. Yep. War on time. Awesome. So you're constantly innovating. You're coming up with, with great products. You obviously practice what you preach and, um, uh, you're very responsible in the way that you're bringing the stuff to market. What's, what is the current distribution of the product line? Uh, major retail locations. Can you buy it online? Where, where are people buying this? Yeah. So, uh, we still do a lot of sales through our website and Amazon, uh, but our retail footprint is growing rapidly. You know, we first launched into our first national retail partner was vitamin shop in 2020. We launched in February. <laughs> so, um, you know, March hit and, and, you know, things got crazy, but it was good. We were the fastest growing new brand, excuse me, the fastest growing new brand of 2020. We uh, were brand of the year last year uh, for vitamin shop. And, and this year they, they ran it by product and we were, um, you know, I think product of the year out of three out of five categories, I believe. So, you know, we've really had a great relationship with them, but it grew, you know, we really excelled in regional grocery. So places like Hannaford brothers up in the Northeast, um, Meyer out in the Midwest, you know, HEB down in Texas, those regional grocery partners have been phenomenal for us, but we are launching into, uh, Walmart, uh, later this month. And so that'll be uh, nationwide uh, Walmart launch for a couple of our products. And that's the big one. You know, that's the big, that's the big next step. That's the big test. And it's always been our goal. It's always been Jocko's goal. Like his big, he said it, I remember since day one. So what's the long-term plan? What's the goal for, for the company other than, you know, let's make great products and hopefully make a profit from a business standpoint. It was, what do we want to do? And he said, I want to, like, I want these products to be accessible at someone's fingertips, like on the ready, like, you know, if they want to drive to the store and get them, then I, I want to make them available. And so this launch into Walmart will essentially do that with a couple of our products. It's not the full product line because we have a lot of products, but a couple of our products will, um, you know, be nationwide in Walmart, which I believe covers, I think it's 80% of the United States as far as like shoppers. So that's, really checking the box for us. And, you know, we're just going to keep going, keep growing. Sir, S Sergey from Google said that, you know, he, they spent 70% of their time on their core business, 20% in adjacencies, which are businesses that are related to the business. And then 10% just out of the box innovation. As you hmm. look to the future and obviously, you know, one plus one plus one, you know, continue to add distribution, incremental adjustments to the product line, continue to bring great resources to people that are interested in health. What are, uh, do you have um, a mechanism in your team to get away and just think about what's possible and maybe what's missing uh, from something that uh, can just be a, you know, out of left field type thing for you guys? Yeah. Um, do we have a me mechanism? Yeah, we do. I mean, we, we do a number of offsites, uh, with, with some really bright people, you know, one of our, um, you know, he's a partner of the brand now, but he, he started off as a board member. Uh, his name's Kip folks 
And so he's strategic advisor to my partner, Pete, as well. And so Kip was the co-founder of Under Armour. And so having someone that started day one with, you know, Under Armour and grew it to, you know, multi-billion dollars for, you know, had done every role imaginable through the organization as it, as it grew has just been insanely beneficial. And we have great investment partners. We just have such a great team. So I'd say there's no shortage of, uh, outside of the box idea conversations. That's for sure. That's, it is never vanilla. Mm. Brian, what do you do when you're not working, man? Um, how do you, uh, how do you keep the balance between, uh, fast growing high profile business and then keeping yourself sane, uh, keeping yourself balanced and, and making sur sure that you're feeding those aspects of your, of your soul as well. Um, well, I would say, I think the, it should be a, I, I would say this, like, it should be like a pursuit of balance. But if you're on a rocket ship like this, yeah, you're often not balanced. You, you, you're just, you're just not. And, and, you know, I have some people that, um, I have some friends in, in, in business that, you know, probably do a better job than me at balancing that. And I have some that do a, you know, I, I know for a fact, do a worse job for me. It just comes back to, uh, you got to service the machine, you know, you can't let yeah. it break down. So you, it's okay to push it though, in yeah. my opinion, especially, I, I also know like I'm not a spring chicken anymore, but at the same time, I'm probably feel a lot better right now than I will when I'm 60, 65, 70. So take advantage of the, the, the energy and the, the way I feel now. And, you know, and, you know, postpone a little bit of that, uh, freedom and satisfaction and, and just, uh, put it down now so I can, uh, reap the benefits later. So I would say I, I definitely still prioritize getting to the gym, doing my, you know, particularly jujitsu. Like I've been doing jujitsu for, you know, 15 years. I still make sure I get on the mats, um, once a week and, you know, and then, uh, you know, I still, you know, when I find time I'm doing the sauna, I don't do the cold plunge nearly as much as I used to. Um, yeah, that's I, don't blame you. I don't blame you for that. <laughs> it's, it's uh, I got a sauna and a, a cold plunge right next to it. And the cold plunge is it's lonely. It gets, uh, <laughs> neglected. Yeah. You know, I, I got really, I was really heavy in, in the cold, cold exposure thing. And I think it has a ton of benefits. What I actually found was I went through a period of about, I don't know, probably three months, four months where I did it like every single day in a row. And I, what I actually found was you grow just like anything, you grow a conditioning to it. And the cognitive benefits that I was getting from that stimuli kind of faded. And so sure. what I found was like, and that's where I got the most benefit from it. Like as far as like cold shock proteins for longevity and stuff, I'm sure you're still, you're probably still getting those benefits even with conditioning, but f I was using it for like the cognitive benefit. Like I just felt so much more alert and on, on, on point after using it that when that started to fade, I was like, well, this doesn't make sense. So then I started using it kind of on an as needed basis. Let's say I was jet lagged or I had to go into a big meeting or something. It's like hitting that before something really important where you're going to perform like that's a hack. And when you have that conditioning built up, I noticed the the return was a little bit diminished. So yeah, I, I kind of pulled back on that, but the sauna, like I, I wish I got in the sauna every single day. I mean, we know the health benefits to that are profound. So, but yeah, I mean, trying to eat healthy, trying to eat clean, working out, trying to prioritize sleep. That's the hard one, right? You know, when you got yeah. a lot of shit to do, it's yeah. uh uh, I'm thankful that I have, um, you know, I have a two year old daughter who is amazing and thankfully on the, on the regular sleeps really, really well, you know, after some sleep training, but you know, there was a period of six months to a year that, that, that was there, that I didn't know what sleep was. So, um, you know, it was, uh, it's fun, a lot of fun. Well, congratulations on that. I mean, with the cold tub, I mean, con our bodies adapt. 
and you know contrast is key and confu body confusion uh, helps and anything you do every day, man, we are adaptable and our bodies are just gonna adjust right to it. So you gotta keep it like any relationship with yourself, like you gotta keep it fresh and you gotta keep changing it out. Um, and congratulations on your daughter. Um, what, you. Uh, you were an entrepreneur from an early age. What advice would you have to young people today that are just thinking about cracking into business? I would say, I mean, it's, it's changed so much over the, the last few years too, when I've done, done more of these types of interviews or started working with other entrepreneurs, like my answer has, has changed. I would say the best piece of advice I could give that currently right now, snapshot of my mindset, cause it changes, it evolves. The best piece would be you, I think that you have to embrace the sacrifice. And so a lot of people will say, um, you know, the key to success is, um, you know, a great idea or timing or hard. We, we hear, always hear like hard work. Uh, but for me, it's like, think of it as sacrifice. And when you can do that and you can be okay with it, uh, you're, you're, you're going to be able to sleep better because it's not going to weigh on you as much. You understand it's a conscious decision. So if you're not okay with it, it it's going to eat at you. And so you have to say, okay, I'm going to sacrifice this time with my family or my loved ones or doing something I'd rather be doing, whether that's hiking or maybe it's biking or maybe it's swimming or whatever it is. It's okay to sacrifice a little bit now for something more later. And yeah. it's probably necessary. But the difference is, I think, with a lot of entrepreneurs is they understand they need to do the sacrifice, but they never get right with it. They don't understand that they don't really get comfortable with it. And so it eats at them. And so that's one thing I'd say is just get comfortable with it. Man, that's a, that's a great point. You know, about, and back to the balance thing, balance is a fallacy. If you're going to do something great, then you're going to sac the more it's, you're going to sacrifice greatly for it. Yeah. You don't have to do it your whole life. People that worked for jobs said it was the hardest, but greatest 18 months that they survived there. We're going 120 hours a week cranking out those iPhones. But, um, man, I, I got a little hack and I don't, I don't think I heard it anywhere. I just think it, I just came up with it one, one morning and it was, um, change the meaning. So anytime hmm. that I find myself dissatisfied with something or upset or, you know, even going into negative self-talk or, uh, you know, maybe I, I don't feel sorry for myself anymore. I, I think I've overcome that, but like, just, you know, like uh, feeling like I would rather be doing something else, even though I know this is what I need to be doing. Or when something goes bad, I just change the meaning of it. And I'll be like, okay, what's the universe trying to teach me right here? You know, what a great opportunity that, you know, the size of an entrepreneur is directly related to the size of their problems. And if I didn't have five things that were just weighing down on me right now, then my business would probably not, would be small. And uh, so, you know, you can, you can pretty, I can snap myself around in, in half a second by just changing the meaning of something. Uh, which shows how programmable we are and in a way kind of how stupid we are, how malleable we are, how gullible we are. Uh, I can trick myself into almost anything. I like that. It's, it's similar to, um, I, I like it a lot, actually. It's, it's a, it's a mindset thing, right? I mean, it, yeah. it's just, mindset. that's, that's, that's what it is. And uh, my buddy, JP Dinell, he, he always says, like, I get to do this. So the moment that he gets tasked with something that he maybe wouldn't normally want to do, he says, oh, cool, I get to do this, you know, because he lost, you know, as a, as a former SEAL himself, you know, he lost team members and he, he changes that mindset to like, I could not have the opportunity to do anything. So what I'm going to complain about, you know, having to do this paperwork, I'm going to yeah. complain about having to, you know, uh, have this meeting with this person that I don't really want to meet with. It's like, no, I get to do this. So I like that. It's just, it's just a, it's a really, it's a maturity of mindset. Right. So obviously you didn't have that uh, no. always. No. And so I like that. That's cool. Think about when you're like three quarters of the way through a workout and it's not too hard, but you're bored mm. and you're just like, okay, I want to get through this. I got, I got, you know, I got two more sets, two more sets of this circuit to do. Yeah, I know I'm going to get through it, but like I'm, my mind is already halfway through my day and I'm not focused on it. And because of that, 
you know, I'm not really giving the effort. And then, you know, just change the meaning to something. Hey, what not, why would I, what an opportunity to, to, to do this and not waste this time. Uh, and next thing you know, your, your trainer who, or your workout partners like, dude, what got into you? You know, like all you just you just did you just did twice as good as you did the last set, and, and it was just like, well, I just I just changed my mind, uh, yep. and it just takes a second. But well, no, awesome, yeah, Brian, this has been great. Uh, I I really appreciate you being on. Congratulations on all your success. Appreciate you bringing these great prod, uh, products to to bear, and I really learned some things uh, and I, the the notes I I took. But the benefit is I can go back and listen to this again. But <laughs> uh, about some of these. Uh, some of these compounds and stuff in your time war product. Cause I think for me and so many of us out there, we're just looking to finish impeccably. Uh, we want to be our best self. We want to have energy and there's so much noise out there, uh, about, you know, what, what do you need and what, it, what don't you need? Uh, so I'm definitely going to dig deeper into the product line here, order a couple of things and I'll, I'll let you know how it goes. Awesome. Well, yeah, I appreciate, I appreciate it. it. Last question though, Brian, for you, if you had one sentence to make an impact in somebody's life today, what would that be? Oh man. What's your go-to? What do you, what would you tell your daughter? I'd say take the chance. Awesome. Yeah. What's it? I mean, that's the, that, that would be it is just take the chance. This, you can probably always go back to whatever it is you were doing before. So what's the, what's the, what's uh what's the risk, right? Just take the yeah. chance. Most of the things we do as entrepreneurs aren't fatal. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. This has been Brian Littlefield with Jeff Duden. We have been on the home front. Thank you, sir. Thank you.